as far as the Bumby, we were talking about that before we got interrupted. Um, you were saying that it was very feature heavy. Uh, I guess our first track, the approach of it was different than what I thought it was going to be, and I liked the approach, but I kind of expected <coughs> feature heavy. Um, what, what were your thoughts on the album? I was expecting a lot of features. I wasn't expecting it to be this feature heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, the production was... I, how about this? When I listened to it, I was like, Mike is going to enjoy this production more than I am. Because <laughs> I knew we were listening to the project at the same time. And I was like, well, this production-wise, probably Mike is going to enjoy it more than me. That, that doesn't mean, like, I feel like the production was bad by any means, though. It just wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. And I was maybe expecting something a little different from Bun. Well, Bun's know? an interesting artist because it's like, and, and kind of like what we were saying offline. I feel like Bun and Big Boy have fallen into some of the same traits as a solo artist um, because it's like we're so used to hearing them with another person mm -hmm. and they're probably used to composing, um, you know, many of their tracks with another person or other people. So I think features just kind of, it just kind of happens, you know? No, it does, but I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the original trill, and it's like, well, that just didn't have, just wasn't as feature heavy, and it was a much superior project. And I know we're talking about more of like a prime bun B, and the expectation is not like <clears throat> to match that. I just right. felt like, this, I mean, like, what would you rate this album? Uh, I haven't heard it enough to rate it. I think I could be, I could speak to the Dave East a little bit more in rating that. Okay. This is what I will say about the Bun B project and the features that are on it. It feels like more of a I'm spreading love type of project yes. than, um, you know, something where I'm getting my thing down. And, and I think that feature heavy and, and, and this is the thing, too, about this kind of feature heavy. It feels like the features are kind of guiding the themes of the song. And when that's the case, you have to think that that artist isn't as ingratiated in music as they once were, and they're kind of leaning on some of the features to to basically guide the songs that, respectfully. That can be a fair assessment somewhat respectfully. Uh, producers are kind of supposed to do that for artists as they age, I think. And yeah. so that's why I kind of brought up the production is like, well, maybe not my cup of tea, because I felt like the production could have been more sturdy from here or more consistent. Like something about this album needed to be more consistent to make it feel like a Bun B album and not a uh, collaborative spread love project like you espoused upon. Yeah. Um, again, I think what are the expectations at this point? You know, I think that what what Nas just did with Magic has really thrown a lot of things off in the in the universe for MCs at a certain age range. Like, right. you know, it, it's kind of like what LeBron James has done in basketball. It's like we expect somebody in their 19th season to be bumming it out, you know what I mean? And just barely, you know, making a roster and really just running a roster off of leadership. But well, it's not even not the, the 37. Case. It's more the 20 years than the 37, I think. You know what I no, mean? No, that's so, what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. 19th season. Is it 19th or is it 20th season now? 19th season, I believe. But yeah, I, mean, I mean, 37 I mean, but, is whatever, but it's like the 19th season and all those playoff runs. That's what I was thinking. Is the impressive thinking, part. How many, how many seasons of playoff basketball has he played? He's probably played another four or five seasons worth of playoff basketball. Yeah, Maybe. man. He's played more minutes than organizations. For real? Yeah, man, I saw a crazy stat up there where it was like, you look at people's whole roster, and he has like almost double the minutes as you know organizations' whole rosters, and it's it's wild, man. And again, for veteran MCs that want to put out records, I think this is pro if you're not totally inspired, this is probably the best way to do it. Because like I said, Nas has because Nas has pushed this thing to another level. No, that's that, I think that's a good way of putting it. If you're not like, if you're not regularly in the cipher anymore, this is a good way to put a project together. But for somebody of his stature and of his caliber, I just I just would have liked it's what eleven records. I would have liked to hear at least two just straight solo shots, just straight. Uh, 
You know what I mean? I think we're going to have to rate Bun at some point. Um, you know, oh, Bun's getting rated. Yeah, Bun and Pimp is getting rated. Yeah. Does a um does an album like this lower anything for you when it comes to Bun? No, but I, it's like I told you right before we started. I think the first version of the show that got shut down. Uh, it made me think once again about Andre, and I was like, well, this is why we need a solo album of material from him, because it's like, well, how can we take Bun down for something like this when he's already given us better solo material and he's some part of an all-time legendary duo, but he releases solo material. But that's the thing. He's actually giving it a shot. You know what I'm saying? So if we're able to rate somebody, I think right. a not available is a, you know, it's a subtraction. Like if you if you go into a test and you don't answer the question, it's wrong. We're not giving you points for skipping a question, and that's what Andre's done, honestly. No, so 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 I look at a project like this, and it's like, well, like you said, at least he's giving it a shot. We got other legends that don't even like you know at this stage. Like Bun don't have to make an album, do we? No, no. This, I mean, it's just for the love, for the fans, and, you know, it's something to do, and, you know, probably was fun to do. And that's cool. And I like that, too. And, and again, we, I know people probably think we're beating up on Andre and Kendrick and all that, but when I heard Snoop's album, uh, was it Back on Death Row? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It sounded like Snoop was just having fun, and it just made me think, like, damn, Kendrick, you can't even have fun? You know what I'm saying? Like... Just put together some music, man. Making some money, you know. Done well for yourself. It is what it is. Uh, okay. Now I heard the Elza. I've heard, I've heard it. I've heard it now. Oh ho ho ho! We got another super chat, and things are kind of coming in slow. Okay. Blue Collar Hustle says, "Do you think Bun is just used to being in a group?" I do think that's what so. Mike said. Yeah, yeah. I think Mike so. Um. Well, you know, it's not just a group. I think it's not the fact, it's the fact that Pimp could lay tracks too and sing. So it's like he's missing his partner in rhyme, producer, and a hook guy. Like you miss a lot of things when you miss Pimp. And I was actually thinking, I was like, yeah, they're both going to get rated. And I'm going to tell you what, I've always preferred Bun as an MC, but Pimp is probably going to rate higher because of all the things that he brought to the table. Like, this is one of the things, man. Like, voice. Yeah, voice, yeah, definitely. 